following podcast has been brought to you by German boys and girls, children of all ages. Rambo Mini Show probably brings to you. It is I, one half of the longest reigning ever tag team champions of the world. The Angel of Death 6XL joining me as always. That would be I, your current reigning, defending, undisputed Rambo Mania champion of the world. Eight Not times, by long. the way. <laughs> <laughs> TJ the Great 2. TJ the Great. And I... <laughs> and I am your former eight-time Rainbow Mania heavyweight champion. Yes, I know I look really my, my weird. My son is tired. Today, so I am Sideshow Hazel, week. so hide all your Bart children. It's been rough. Yeah, it, it has been a rough week. This is the fourth straight day in the row that I'm recording. Like, yep. I'm just putting in work. Yeah. This man on the grind. Mm-hmm. I'm putting that work, man. But of course, as you know, we are the Banter Club. And as always, we discuss that AEW Dynamite on the Hose Network. I've got hoes. We got them hoes. We got them out in the area codes. They still area awaiting them instructions. Codes. They know. They know. They know it's coming soon. They gonna get to work soon, but they are waiting right now. Before we talk about AEW Dynamite, of course, we talk about the little bits and pieces of news in and out and about across the world, the pro wrestling, and we got a few things to talk about this week before we get into Dynamite. So let's get straight to it. Let's let's start over in the double double E. Let's go over there for a moment and let's uh, talk about the man, their their big signing of the day, of the week, of the month, oh perhaps God. of the year. Oh God. Logan Paul has signed a multi-year contract with WWE. So uh, Ariel Helwani reported this, uh, that it is a multi-year deal to compete at multiple events per year. So I imagine it'll be, you know. His matches would be like big fours or whatever. Maybe some raw appearances, SmackDown appearances, however that balances out. But it looks like they got Logan Paul in for for the long haul, so to speak. They they got him as a WWE superstar. Um, so, yeah, Logan Paul's coming in. He's presumably going to feud because I think that's what you were telling me, right, Hazel, on Raw, that this, Miz was calling I mean, him out I mean, again. I've been telling you guys this since um, after their match at Mania that, like, yeah, this is going to take a while, and it's finally going to culminate at SummerSlam. And that's where it looks like it's going to happen. It's going to be Miz and Logan Paul at SummerSlam, most likely. So, yeah. Uh, All right, so boom. All right, so boom. Let me tell you something. It's going to be me and Hazel. We're going to get signed to WWE in, like, two years. <laughs> tops. I'm telling you right now. Me and Hazel going to get signed. And Tevin's gonna get signed as 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 like our, our, our head of creative or some shit or, or, or some shit. Watch, I ain't going over and there. We're just all gonna get signed. <laughs> <laughs> I need a lot of zeros to go over there. <laughs> is it gonna is it gonna be un, is it gonna be under the zeros. McMahon name or under the Levesque name? Ooh, if it's under the Levesque name, I'm yeah. I don't give a damn. <laughs> we're, de- <laughs> going. we're definitely going. <laughs> just to sit under the learning tree at least. Shit. <laughs> I need them zeros. Definitely. I need them zeros. Fuck all that. <laughs> so you need I want nigga so if you if you give me the experience on the triple H zero out of here, bro. <laughs> zeros. So nah, you want the McMahon. I'm thinking I'm thinking I'm thinking future, man. Because yeah. I could I could leave there whenever the fuck I'm I want. Thinking future yeah, exactly. just, Show me the money. <laughs> He's gonna say he want that money now. He, he, I'm he, over here thinking about you. I could be a billionaire fucking wrestling company owner in, in, in a few years. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking. I'm thinking that way. You know what I'm saying? But T- it is what it TJ is. TJ is basically <laughs> the, a member, a, a long lost member of the Outsiders. Wait, you mean to tell me I get I get paid this amount? For how many days? Exactly. Yeah, fuck <laughs> WWE. I'm out here. Work smarter, not harder. I work for, yeah. I work for less fucking days. But um. Uh, yeah, no, Logan Paul is coming in. I, I think it's a good move for them. I said this at WrestleMania. 
Um, WWE clearly is the best at shenanigans and celebrity involvement and, and, and all that type of wacky stuff. We can train anybody to be pro wrestlers type of thing. That's how they built WrestleMania. Mr. T, Cindy Lauper, you know, the whole rock and wrestling deal, all that. So I feel like this is the direct, I, I said it then, I'll say it now. I think that's the direction they should go a hundred percent full hog into. So, you know, yeah. good signing for them. You know, Tev, I was going to say, but you, you kind of just went for it. <laughs> I was going to say, you, you remind me of J.G. JG Wentworth. <laughs> it's my money, and I need it now. <laughs> Tevin has a structured settlement, and he needs cash I now. Need cash <laughs> now. Call J.G. <laughs> Wentworth. 877 seven, cash now. <laughs> like, like the man Vince Russo once said, send me cash. <laughs> send it cash. Big Venom, nigga. Big yeah. Venom, send it cash. Yeah. So, I fucks with Vic Venom. I don't fuck with Vince Russo. <laughs> <laughs> Vic Venom be hanging out in the two train rail yard and shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I got yeah, some, I got some news <laughs> that I do want to talk about. Also, um, apparently, uh, Joey Ryan has been fired from Disney after they just found out about his uh, sexual accusations that took place in 2020. Apparently Disney didn't do very didn't do a very thorough background check because they didn't wow you know check his wrestling background to find out about this history. So apparently he's been working with Disney for about six months on the Jungle Cruise, and then uh, all of a sudden someone found out that he was working there, and then they put out all the tweets for Disney to see, and then yeah, that all they had to do was ask a wrestling fan the fuck. Yeah, but that's that's what they said. <laughs> they they looked up his real name and yeah. not his wrestling name. You, so as, you know, again, like six. Imagine if you did something horrible, but in order for you to actually you know live on with your life and you know have a career, you have to use your real name because nobody knows you by your real name. People know you mm. by what you used to be. And then mm. you know a year or two later, you're doing so well, and then all of a sudden you get called up to your manager's office like. What's the shit that I hear that you did this, 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 and that to all these Well, that wouldn't happen to me because I'm not a fucking creep. But no, but I'm just what? saying hypothetically. What is a <laughs> ballplex, sir? Can you tell me what a ballplex is? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you did what? <laughs> <laughs> Why is this you, man grabbing can your Can you genitals? explain to me? You over here doing explain? penis twisters and shit? What the fuck is this <laughs> shit? <laughs> So, like, can you explain to me, why is it that we have you in your office and we pull out this video of you giving a suplex with your penis onto men and women in the wrestling room? Can you explain that to us? And Joey Ryan just looks at them like, it's a gimmick. Well, we can't have that in Disney. We got to let you go, man. <laughs> mm. I mean, you know, Joey Ryan is 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 essentially blackballed from most pro wrestling. And, um, I mean, when it when it comes to that, Sure, move on. And, and I, I think that's what he should have done. Move on, get the fuck out of the business, do get a real job, and you know, just move on with your life. You fucked up, you fumbled the bag, that's over. But I mean, yeah, when you think about it, can, when you consider what he was accused of, um, Disney World is probably the worst possible place to put him. <laughs> probably where yeah. the Home Depot or some shit. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> You're going to immediately tell that they already have a, 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 uh, a printed out picture of him with security that says, do not let this man in. Man. Our premises at all costs. Now he banned from wrestling and Disney. It's so, <laughs> and it's so sad because, you know, I interviewed him before yeah. all this shit took place. This was in 2019. I still have it. I still have all that footage. I can't put that out. And it sucks that I can't put that out because all this shit broke out and all this not only ruined him but he ruined it for himself honestly yeah, so yeah that's that's we, we can't we can't basically you know humanize someone like joey ryan for doing heinous acts like what he did and like what all those women stated on those claims we have to look at this man for what he represented himself and that's how you're gonna be for the rest of your life until yeah. maybe you fucking croak yeah like i said at yeah. the end of the day he brought that on himself and i mean you know He's got to deal with the consequences of that and navigate the world as as that is. Um, but uh, moving on, let's talk. Let's talk about the boy five, Alan Angels. Mm, I heard about oh, this. Oh man, 
So apparently his contract will be expiring soon and it will not be renewed, apparently. I told you this Tuesday. They doing our boys bad, bro. His contract was already done. I told you. But apparently, apparently, um, he put out a statement. This was more or less a mutual agreement. He he more or less wanted to go out and do his own thing because he's only he's only twenty four years old. So he wanted to go and and try his hand and expand and grow his brand in the landscape of pro wrestling. Which so then I'm cool with that. Yeah, yeah. When you look at it from that standpoint. Then I get that because again, yeah, he is. He is a young dude, and hey, you this go is travel? a good. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is a good opportunity for him to, you know, get better at the craft, expand your brand, and you know, it, it's it's cool to be in AEW, but the company is so packed right now that if you're a yeah. lower car guy, then it probably would bode better for you if you were to go yeah. out and and work the indies and you know hustle yeah. that way. As opposed they're probably to probably bored to be honest. That's yeah. why I always respected um, this one opinion that Chris Canyon used to tell the Young Bucks, like, the journey oh. is always better than reaching the destination. That was probably me. I had to, um, my volume keeps lowering and shit on here. Sorry. So, yeah, the journey is more oh, better no. than reaching the destination. And honestly, Alan Angels could continue his journey making more money in all the independent promotions and pro wrestling tees instead of just making it to the destination being stuck in one goddamn place. Yeah, and I mean, you know, with with the way this goes, he leaves on good terms. So the door is open for a comeback down the line if, say, he reinvents himself as something crazy and is like, oh, we got to bring you back now. So, you know. There's there's always that possibility. So And there's another way that like I can respect AEW for this because they look at these contracts and they tell these guys like, hey, we're not gonna re-sign you, we're gonna let your contract expire. WWE, they just lie to you. Budget cuts, Damn. budget cuts, budget cuts. <laughs> budget cuts, budget cuts. Budget cuts. I mean, yeah, yeah, that like, that is the one difference. They AEW essentially they don't yeah. release people unless it's for like a, if you yeah. get released from AEW, it's for a reason, a bad reason. Yeah. Most likely. Yeah, if you're Jimmy um, Havoc. Yes, yeah, shit like that. Eek. Eek. But um, <laughs> otherwise, like if if they're not gonna, if they don't want to bring you back, then they'll just they'll just let you run out your contract, and then that'll mm-hmm. be that. But you know, you get paid and everything, so yeah, that's that's yeah. one good element of it. Let's talk about the rating for AEW Dynamite Blood oh, and Guts. Hell yeah, they did one million viewers. Okay. Which is up sixteen percent from last week, and a three mm-hmm. six and eighteen to forty nine key uh-huh. demographic, which is the best number for the show since Rob Van Dam Day, April twenty. I was one of those viewers. Hazel was watching last night, so it, it, got, it got over big. <laughs> one whole hour of blood and guts. My God, I can't wait till we talk about that shit. <laughs> It, it was exactly what Brian Danielson said. It was going to be a bloody spectacle. Yeah, uh, this was this is a very good number. Number one on cable. And that's the second week in a row they're number one. And Tony Khan was talking about it on Twitter. Second year in a row that Blood and Guts is number one on cable. It was number one last year. It's number mm. one this year. And w- remember when we talked about the trends you note, know, year to year is one of the trends you note. Know, and this is up from last year's Blood and Guts number. So when you talk about growth and whether the company is in the midst of growth or not, this is one of those examples that you point to growth right there. Mm-hmm. So very good number for, for Blood and Guts. Blood and Guts is a, is a landmark event. It, it seems to be for the company. I just wish they would do it commercial free, but that's okay because I watch the fight feed of this shit. So <laughs> lucky, lucky you. I was I was on the call up podcast, had to take like seven shots while there was fucking commercials. <laughs> And then meanwhile, over here, I got the Holes Network, so I don't yep. even get Pip. <laughs> so, oh, damn. Like, I get cut off, bro. I just get fucking <laughs> TBS ads and shit, and I'm over here like... That's disrespect. <sighs> That's yeah, disrespect. I don't even get the pit, bro. Like they should, they should, they should at least give it to you. Like they do the fight network. Like that's kind of fucked up. Like nah, well, if you don't said, watch it on the app, they should give you like the fight feed or something. Like shit. I watched it on at the least stream. Like, like, like a I was longer getting version, picture right? in picture. Yeah. At least like a longer version of it, where it's like, all right, fuck it. At least we won't include the the pit, and we'll still throw the ads in. You feel me? Like Instead, yeah, they just give me fucking ads. TJ's <laughs> lucky the- that he has the, the fight app because he can actually listen to JR yeah. say fuck multiple times while we're on fucking commercials. <laughs> yeah, I'm curse. A- what, Dan, Dan, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I'm here fucking uh, every every time. Yo, literally, it went like this. We're here. We got a word from DraftKings. <laughs> With Luderma. I'm like, what the fuck? That's not DraftKings. <laughs> DraftKings going crazy. <laughs> Pumping medicine. <laughs> <laughs> and then it goes there it was, gives you this bullshit at there the end was where it's one like moment side in, effects include it goes side was, effects include uh, nausea heartburn indigestion your, your vagina starts to bleed <laughs> I'm like what the fuck yeah. <laughs> there was one moment that happened like going to the very end I think it was one of the final commercials I don't know if this happens on AEW but if mm-hmm. this happens often and this this probably pisses a lot of people off so apparently they went to picture in picture in the last commercial and then two minutes into picture in picture, they just went straight to regular commercial. What the fuck? That does happen sometimes, like, and I what? hate that shit. I, I thought, I, like, I'm, I'm thinking maybe, yo, I'm, I'm not, I'm not high off the weed that I just smoked. For them to just be like, you know what, fuck it, let's get rid of the small picture in picture and just give you all commercials. They dead ass just did that. I'm like, why the fuck would you do that? They <laughs> did. It's, it's like I said, fucking Tony Khan, he did that interview where he was talking about when Vince uh, did the tried to compete against Rampage and was like, yeah, I could have paid for, for a commercial free. So then do it. Do it for blood and guts. <laughs> Come on, man. Like, what the fuck? You could have done that. Forget forget competing with WWE. Do it for blood and guts. <laughs> yeah, do, do it for shit that matters, bro. Yeah, do it for some cool shit. This would be, that'd be exactly. cool. Exactly. But uh, you know, nonetheless, they they did it how they did it. They got to pay them bills, I guess. Them gimmicks in the mail called bills. Yep. Um, Steve Austin. <laughs> hey, you damn right, son. Uh, so with that said, are we ready to get to the dynamites? <clears throat> that that's my line. <clears throat> and it goes a little something like this: TJ, that's me, the champion. <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> Indeed, I am. No, ready. Hazel, uh, what, are what? you ready? Uh, I was born ready. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> are you ready? I am ready. We're ready. Uh, I went back to NXT though, so I don't know why I'm here. Fuck it. Then. <laughs> Except there was no changes on Tuesday, even though I said I was back. I'm not technically back yet, because I need to get Vince off of power. Silence! <laughs> <laughs> then, for the thousands in attendance. Thousands. <laughs> One extra person equals a thousand. Yeah, and the millions <laughs> walking, watching at home. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> And for one guy in a black hat again, because he gets special treatment tonight, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> and for one man upstairs that is saying, yeah. 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 We love you, Fridge. Rest in peace, man. It is time to light the fuse. And bring the boom. Did somebody say broom? And uh, let's banter. AEW Dynamite Blood and Guts from Detroit, Michigan, the damn Little Caesars Arena. <laughs> Jim Ross I, later I, says I, I, I he loves their pizza. I gotta ask somebody that's been there. Yeah, he was like, I, I like their pizza. Do they serve Little Caesars in that arena? They got to, oh, right? Oh, that mean, would be lit. I'm in there. I mean, apparently there was a picture with uh, um, one of the referees that was holding on to the Little Caesars like staff with the pizza on top of it and shit. Oh, so man. I'm guessing they do sell it there. Oh, and I want to give a quick shout out to Homeboy Dave from the Pro Show. He was actually in attendance for Blood and Guts last night. He's usually on the Call Up podcast with Kenny. Nice. So, yeah, he, he got oh, some he really got good footage live. from the show. Yeah, that's fire. Um, but, yes, uh, as Six alluded to, we opened with Excalibur, Tony Schiavone, and Taz on commentary. As they note that JR is being saved for the main event. And the speculation around that appears to be that they're moving toward having JR do, like, big spot matches like that and... and I guess they're they're moving toward having Taz be the third guy instead of Jr. For the most part, 
Which makes uh, sense. It gives him a lighter schedule. He's probably going to still get paid well. He still gets to do what he loves, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I like it. Because, you know, like we've, we've all talked about it, you know, there's holes in modern JR's game, but he still knows how to turn it on when he's got to turn it on. And I feel like this will best maximize those moments. Plus, and, isn't he still going through um his skin cancer treatment? I think he finished it. I, yeah, I believe he, he finished it, but I still think he gets, like, certain treatments. Yeah, yeah I think yeah, he's got to do treatments like, and checkups and shit, yeah. <laughs> but, and, and also, fucking Excalibur and Taz is, <laughs> might be my favorite commentary team in wrestling. So, hell yeah, I'm with that shit. <laughs> yeah, him, him and Taz be hilarious. Especially when, when you're watching AEW Dark. It's in like, Dark, they go crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I've, never, I've, never seen, I've never seen guys, like, break character more in wrestling than these two, like, but uh, we open up with the first match of the evening, Orange Cassidy versus Ethan this, Page. This right here. This so, song, bro. <laughs> they couldn't get this song in time for the pay-per-view, but they got it now. Orange Cassidy now has his old song on the indies, Jane by Jefferson Starship as his theme. Not Scott Steiner, Jane. You know what? You know what gets me, though? This nigga Taz literally goes... Oh, this place is about to erupt! Right? And as he says that, the Orange Cassidy walks out and the place goes boom. I'm like, well, he called that. <laughs> Crazy pop. Because mm-hmm. I, I feel like at first mm-hmm. a lot of the crowd didn't realize, oh, wait, he's coming out here. And then when the Orange Cassidy popped up on the video wall and shit. Boom. Yeah! Awesome. Oh, awesome. And then, it was, and then he, it was a bigger pop when it was like, all right, the best friends are back with him. I'm like, oh, all the friends are back together except and for they're wearing and fucking Dan tie-dye. Yeah, 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 gang is gang again. You love to see it. Mm-hmm. They look like they came out of a rave. <laughs> they all were just smoking pot in the back with Hook. <laughs> no, they probably, they probably, well, they were probably smoking pot with Hook, but they were probably taking the, those fucking LSD fucking tabs and shit. That's why they were wearing the goddamn tie. I'm not going to speculate all that, goddamn. <laughs> yeah. Leave that to... to at well, least say, Jack at least Evans say ain't mushrooms, there no my man. At least <laughs> mushrooms. Jeez. I um, Orange Cassidy, of course, fresh off having the match of the night at fucking Forbidden Door. Should that know. was a five-star but, um, match. Tony Schiavone said that. If you believe in the five-star scale, I think that was a five-star match. We even um, said it was a five-star match. Yeah. I gave it the highest of bars. <laughs> yeah, just under five. I gave it a go, <laughs> along with the tag match. I, I gave that goddamn finish match a fucking go. This one gets uh, uh, very high bars. And then uh, Ethan Page comes out. Dan Lambert's got the mic. He calls Orange Cassidy skinny or something. I don't care. Um, yeah, I was. I kind of like this. <laughs> um, I, you want to know why I liked it? Go ahead. You know, I actually like this. Why? It, he wasn't trying to denigrate him. Like it was, he was, you know, he was doing regular heel manager shit, which I love when he does regular heel manager shit. He did regular heel manager shit, but it was like you're fucking small, Lawrence Cassidy, and I think that shit's lame. So I, don't, I didn't care. Um, but that's the thing. That's what I mean. That's the kind of character that I actually want to see from him because I know, like, that's the gimmick. Like you, all that old school shit. You feel me? If that it's, old if, it's, if it's that or fucking. Him, him calling women sluts mm-hmm. and shit, then yes, I will take this. Exactly. But it's like you can also do better than this, though. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I but, mean, but he, still, he kinda, it's better than than, than what yeah. the fuck he, he usually does. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. I, I, this is bearable. I'm okay with this. Yeah. Like, yeah, this was this was more this was more bearable. It was more tamer. And you know, he played this general. He played this like manager role, like yeah. seriously. Yeah, and like he, he actually actual... got he actually got the best friends escorted because they're not <laughs> managers. Though. Exactly. That was that he was says... the actual point of this. Mm-hmm. He he was like, you know, those guys don't have manager licenses, referee. So you really gonna allow him to be out here? So then Bryce sadly had to pull a. All right, man, you guys, you're out of here. Yep. And the crowd booed. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's the first time I've ever seen uh, you out of here get booed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it wasn't a real you out of here. It was more of a, all right, you you got to yeah, go. Yeah, you got to go. <laughs> you got to go. <laughs> Bryce didn't want right. to do it. But he was like, I, he's right. You got to go. <laughs> it was more like, he fuera. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I find it funny he sh- he's got a bottle of orange juice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lambert is walking around with a bottle of orange juice. I did like that. I like that. <laughs> Good um, heel manager shit. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I love the hard cam shot that they have for this show mm-hmm. because... You know, obviously there's two rings. And, you know, since there's two rings, 
for the blood and guts match to keep it centered, they have to keep it within the middle of the two rings. But yeah. when you're just wrestling in the one ring, it's at an angle. Yes. And I like the angle that it's at because it it widens the scope of the building. You see yes. more of the crowd. Exactly. It, it makes the building look big. The shit look cool. I liked it. I really like the hard cam shot. Awesome on 5,000 in the crowd. Kip Sabian also, is chilling in the front row. It also row. asked like, yeah. a lot of questions because when we saw Blood and Guts last year, it was at Daly's Place. It was when like, you know, there wasn't like any crowds and shit. Now, since like, now since they're back in crowds, they're back on tour, it was like, all right, how they were how they were gonna play this off? It was like, oh, okay, now I see the hard cam. Now I see how everything is gonna be filmed out. Mm-hmm. And I, I like it. I enjoy. I really enjoyed it because it, it had a different kind of atmosphere. Not only mm-hmm. because it was in a different arena, because we needed that fucking crowd reaction. They also, also. had the they also had the pay per view stage, which exactly, hell yeah. And then on top of that, it gives me a little fire pro vibe. I don't know what it is. I guess the angle. Yeah, yeah, that that you know slightly you know turned angle. I like that shit. Yeah, the diagonal um, one, basically. Yeah, yeah. I like that one. But Orange starts this match, of course, hands in the pockets. <laughs> but Ego's not having it. He takes him down. But then Orange takes him outside. Hits the toe, pray suicida. Suicida. Then he flexes on this man in the ring. Then. Ego starts working him over. He puts Orange's hands in his pockets, which is obviously a foolish move, even if he doesn't realize it yet. But Dude, you you're know. charging him back up, bro. What are you doing? Yeah, you're giving him power. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, he sends Orange outside. And then when Orange is outside, Dan walks over to him and hits his own lazy kicks as we go to commercial break. Then he's like, yeah, how you like that? I like that. <laughs> I, <love laughs> I like <it>. that. <laughs> that I liked. <laughs> um. We come back from the break. Orange is making his comeback. He goes for the sunset flip, but Ego cuts him off with the brain buster for a near fall. Uh, Then he goes for the Ego's edge, but then Orange is trying to get his hands in his pockets to stop the Ego's edge, and he does. So then that shit was hilarious. Like he he tried, he was like trying to attempt that shit like three times, and I'm sitting here looking at this and like. There's no fucking way in hell that you're going to attempt to come out of the razor's head by putting your hand in your pot. And he did. <laughs> that's, his, that's his move. Orange can get out of anything if he's just able to get his hands in his pockets. Hands in his pockets. <laughs> <Yeah>. Jesus. So, <laughs> he goes up top. <laughs> But then Dan Lambert interferes. And then Ego's able to grab him off top. Pits a gorilla press power slam. Uh, and then he flips off a kid in the crowd. <laughs> he's like, hey, kid. Yeah. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, lives, I'm down with it. Yeah. <laughs> really, Mr. Like karate it. telling kids to fuck off. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> he goes, lifts him up for a suplex, but Orange is the stun dog, then a satellite DDT for a two count. And then he fires up. He goes for that orange punch, but then Dan Lambert is on the apron once again with the damn orange shoe. So Orange goes over, starts tapping him. Like, hey, how you like that? How you like that? And then he <laughs> goes for the punch, fakes him out, and then he grabs the orange juice. Mm-hmm. Takes a sip of it, yeah. then turns around, gets Ego with the orange punch, then turns around, orange mist in the face of Dan Lambert. It's in orange my, mist by God. You know what's <laughs> what? crazy? In my head, I saw Triple H. Right? <laughs> the game. He said, but <laughs> what was what was Orange Cassidy <laughs> spitting out? Tropicana or Minute Maid? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Was, what what would it, orange it looked mist more like do? Tropicana? It looked more like <laughs> It was really yellow. I feel like Minute Maid is a little like more the, orange It looks like the gallon, the, the, those gallon of oranges that you buy at the fucking supermarket. So he hits the orange. He hits the orange mist. <laughs> and then he scoop slams this man. He was trying to scoop slam him all match. He finally hits the scoop slam and he gets the win. This man won with a fucking body slam. Why do people hate Orange Cassidy again? <laughs> He won with a fucking wrestling move, B. What's he wrong with you He won with a regular wrestling move. Think, put, like, en- engrave that into your skulls and think about that really hard. That's like trying to solve a math equation that you've been trying to solve since the third fucking grade. My and man. I've said this, I've said this about Orange before. This dude is everything that the old school cats preach about in pro yep. wrestling. You got to have a good gimmick that you can mm-hmm. make money off of. Exactly. You can't do too much in your matches. You mm-hmm. got to make the moments count. Mm-hmm. That's Orange Cassidy. <laughs> but you know what it is? You know what it is? Because of the, the funny, the funny like, 
little kicks and little things like that. It's a gimmick. It's a gimmick. It's a gimmick and it works. Stop crying about it. He has a good gimmick. He wrestles exactly how you want him to wrestle, you fucking marks. And it's literally just because of the fact that he can do a little comedy here and there for the fans, which... To be honest, motherfuckers be sucking Hogan's dick. 95% of his shit was all comedy and corny shit. So you're going to tell me otherwise? Nigga, get the fuck out of here. Orange Cassidy's doing exactly what he's supposed to be doing. And for the haters, go keep hating and, 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 and choke on a, on a glizzy. <laughs> <laughs> glizzy gladiator. It's, it's just like, <laughs> my man, people in the carnies have used power slams <laughs> as their finishers, regular moves as their finishers. Why are people complaining that this man had to use a power slam as his finisher? Big fucking whoop. It's wrestling. <laughs> I, I don't know if anyone complained about him using the scoop slam as finish. I'm just saying, like, uh, this is, once again, proof that Orange Cassidy is everything that old school dudes say they that wrestler should be. But for some reason, these old school dudes hate him. Uh, make it make sense. Make it make now, sense. On something that has nothing to do with the match, but wrestling in general. I kind of like having like all the camera guys back again. I like that AEW, you know, they still position them in places where you can't really see them most of the time, but I like the fact that at least with this angle, you can kind of see them walking around because they're yeah. basically in places where they normally wouldn't be seen, but you know, because of the camera angle, you know, being slightly tilt, you can kind of see those guys and you see the guys taking pictures too. So I like that shit. Yeah. It's like they're fucking camouflaged. You can't see them. Usually, yeah. But in this case, you can see them walking around. And it's like, ah, I kind of missed that. All right, yeah. It was pretty good. Um, it makes it feel bigger. Yeah, yeah, it does. Like, it, it made everything feel like a much bigger production tonight. I really like that angle. Uh, and then post-match, Chuck and Trent come back down because you got to give the people what they want. So they all share a hug. And it's, it's, it's looking great out here. And then they look at the camera like this. <laughs> Which is I think, it's been, I I think it's been a while since we at, since we last seen them like hug, yeah, fucking ring together. So it was like, yeah, the OG you finally, three. Gave, you finally gave yeah. us what we wanted. All three OG of them best hugging. friends. It felt it felt yeah. good to see them out there. Yeah, OG best friends. Christian Cage, the instant classic. This motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he joined Tony Schiavone on stage, Jesus. still turtlenecked <laughs> up like a monster. Jesus, he Je- added Jesus. again. He Jesus. added again. This man is a menace. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute menace. This menace, Jesus. You see this shit, Jesus? You got to do something about this, Jesus. <laughs> he, he is greeted with an asshole chant. Yeah. <laughs> Christian Cage with the turtleneck looks like he looks at himself in the mirror and he tells himself this. And the best part about this plan is... No one can stop me. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Christian is rocking right That's now. That's how yep. he is. Super villain. <laughs> and like, then S- Skiavon just, just, you know, he tells him, like, yo, like, you were supposed to be dressed to rest. So I thought you were g- wanted a match. What's going on here? Yeah, and Christian and he is said, like, I'm going to explain yeah, that. <laughs> he says, I was asked by upper management to apologize for what I said last week. And, you know, I never <laughs> apologized for anything I've ever said, ever said or done in my career. But you know, with that being said, I am sorry that Jungle Boy's whole family isn't dead and that they had to witness me end him. Oh. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Let me walk that back. I wish everybody in your family was dead except your mom. <coughs> then he puts the mic down. <laughs> this man is a savage. He says, and then he takes the mic from Tony. He says, the only thing Detroit has going for it is that it's close to Canada. So you sweat hard, you listen to me. You may be wondering, you know, if I requested a match tonight, why am I not dressed to compete? And that's because, yeah, I requested a match, but not for me. And then we get... That's gotta be Kane! (laughs) (laughs) Luchasaurus comes out in Wait, wait, wait. That was not Luchasaurus. That was not Luchasaurus. That was Luchasaurus Dark. <laughs> no, that was Luchasaurus not Luchasaurus that was not, Luchas- <laughs> that was not Luchasaurus Dark. That was Christian Cage's kaiju monster. <laughs> That's the new Godzilla. This man came out in the all black outfit, the black mask, the black tights. It's just like, yeah, we're looking at a legit monster here right now. 
Damn. Fuck Jurassic Park. You're about to see you're about to see some car some carnivorous <coughs> shit being taken place here. Well, as AC DC said, back in black. I hit the sack. <laughs> <laughs> you, you talk about carnivorous, he fucking ate the snake man, poor Serpentico. <laughs> Did you see him in the ring when he when they when he realized it was fucking Luchasaurus evil? Yeah, he, and Justin Roberts was making it out. He was like, no, 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 no. Serpentico. No. I, I don't. <laughs> Damn it. Shook. Shook. <laughs> I'm going to die now. <laughs> Why y'all did this to me, bro? This shit a slaughter. A slaughter. God oh, damn it. That's a slaughter. <laughs> He's probably wondering to himself, where the fuck is Dr. Luther when I need him right now? <laughs> Facts, where bro, is where Dr. the fuck was he? Where is Dr. Luther? Hanging out with probably Dr. Hanging Luther. Hanging out in DPW <laughs> right now. He's chilling in DPW. <laughs> He's exactly. probably chilling with Dr. Wagner Jr. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Luchasaurus kills this man. Post match, Christian is like, actually, kill him again. And he grabs him, choke slams this man on the floor, Damn. leaves him for dead. Jeez. Christian walks by, fucking sweeps the dirt on his face with his feet. <laughs> Disrespect. And and it's like I said last week. It appears that Christian Cage is converting this man Luchasaurus into Tomko. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but I told you. It might be him under the mask. <laughs> no, it's all it's along. not. All we along, know who it, all along. We know who it is under the mask. Hazel, 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 Hazel. Come on, Hazel, Hazel. Come on. Hazel, come on. Look, honestly, come on, like, man. I look. I, I'm Little really, boozy. I, I'm, really digging, <laughs> I'm really digging this whole um this whole thing right now with Luchasaurus being a heel. I kind of been wanting to see this for a long time now, ever since he debuted in Lucha Underground with the whole reptilian faction. With, I think it was with Drago or mm-hmm. some some um, female snake luchador that they had. But now we get Cobra to see it in AEW. Yeah. And I get to Serpentica. see more. And I get to see. Serpentica. And I get to see more of this shit. So I'm hoping that like they make they they like this guy is a monster. They need to make this man a legitimate monster. Let's have monster versus monster. Let's have a let's have a dinosaur monster take on a murder hawk <laughs> monster and let's see who dies. Everybody. That's the answer. Everybody <laughs> dies. Uh, shout Unless out to you're... Cobra Moon, by the way, who we now know as Thunder Rosa. Tony with Wardlow and Scorpio Sky. Uh, of course, no contact clause popped off and everything. Scorpio was like, listen, I ain't no security. And the last time you and I wrestled, I pinned your ass. And Wardlow was like, yeah, whatever, man. I'm done talking. You can bring every <laughs> single member of American Top Team, and I'm going to treat them like they security. Then I'm going to beat your ass, and I'm going to take the title. And Scorpio's like, oh, we're all right. Next week, how about we do this then? You and me for the TNT title in a street fight. Oh so my god! Next week, Street Fight TNT title. Bring Boy, it on! So shit. what you gonna do about it? Bring it on! So you got what you got? Bring it on! So, so what, what you, you gonna, gonna do? do? I'm sorry, Hazel, this, we don't get to sing it, so we're gonna sing it now. <laughs> unbuttoning his his fucking outfit while speaking to Scorpio Sky. He's ready to pop. He's ready to go? Yeah. <laughs> but you acting this? like you ain't from the hood, bro. You seen this shit? Yeah, you okay, know what happens gonna, when a man like, is. I'm gonna take, if I'm gonna take my show, I'm about to fight you right there, right now. Not just, all right, we're gonna make, we're gonna say this next week into a street fight. He can't, bro. That's the problem. They, they got these clauses. So he's like, mm, I wanna whoop your ass, but I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm stuck here with these goddamn. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show you what it is. I want you to know it's an intimidation tactic. Mm hmm. Yes, that's all it is, bro. <laughs> yes, you, bro. You acting like you're not from the hood, bro. You, what you, is you this? You're the same shit, my nigga. What is this? Like some sort of self defense mechanism? Like, oh, I can't, I can't <laughs> fight you now. I gotta fight you next week, my nigga. Like, you're nah, the bro, it's all mind games, don't do bro. that in the hood. They do that. They do that. In the they streets. do that. It's all mind games. It's all mind games. It's all it is. Yeah. That way, they don't really have to fight you, and then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then everything, everything will be solved. You know what I'm saying? At it's that point, good. it's just like, all right, who's gonna who's gonna swing first? <laughs> just to start it, that's it. You know, I'm always swinging first. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, now we got Max Caster and the Gun Club versus Dan Housen and two mystery opponents. Um. So the acclaimed and everybody come out. I thought Max Castle was actually really good this week. You must have thought this was dark or something. He was throwing bars, bro. I this was like, Ooh. man, yeah. This man just throws bars after bars after 
bar. And like, man, call he, Dan he House and a he juggalo. Don't, don't to me. <laughs> Fuck him for he saying that. He said you gonna that. make him drink fucking Flint, Michigan fucking water. I was like, wow. He said, how you cheer a white guy doing white face? White face. I'm <laughs> <laughs> popping that. <laughs> I pop big for oh, that. God. That, that should be to me too. <laughs> that right he, there. like I say, like I say, I'm usually very critical of this man, but this week bars. Nah, he was. <laughs> yeah, he was bars. He was with it this week. He nah, was he, was, this he, week. he he just swung for the fences on it. Like he yeah, he, he was always, ready. Like, he always pull, he always pulls out home runs, and, except for that, you know, Simone Bow's uh rap that he did. Not not, you know, not for six, not for six. Ask Tevin. Yeah. Tevin yeah. knows. I'll be over he here looking he at him. Like, always, he he he's hit or miss, but this week was all hits, no yeah, misses. Yeah, it was bars this week. <laughs> yeah. All hits, no misses this week. You know, I think it is. I think he. I think like he had more improvement. A minute, like. <laughs> He got the ass boys with him, and I was just like, oh, okay. Speaking of the ass boys, you know how they usually do the gimmick? Yeah, they're so mad. They're like, we've had yeah. a fucking enough of this ass boy shit. He was going to hand them the mic, and they were like, no. Nah. nah, we're done. We're like, we're, we're done with this shit. They call us ass boys but, again. But it does, the, the story does culminate when it gets to the end, but we'll talk about that when we mm-hmm. get there. So It does. Great so one. Then Dan Housen them. comes out. He says, you know, I, I guess I found someone... Pretty good at wrestling. Puts the mm-hmm. mic down, and out comes pretty FTR. Good. Yeah, who I would the say fucking pretty good. Pop, Warrior bro. pop again, bro. That Warrior pop, pop again, man. How good are FTR, mind you? The AAA, the Ring of Honor, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. IWGP <laughs> Tag mm-hmm. Team Champions. They just coming out with belts on belts on belts on. All belts. we need is the AEW World Tag Team Titles again. We we got a what is it? Uh, oh, we, we got a quartet of belts uh, on us. Hell yeah. Facts. <laughs> the, the belt collectors, we they, they're Tag the belt team collectors belt right collectors. now. Yeah. Belt collectors. That that's what they are right now. Word. Yeah, you want to talk um, about fucking Kenny Omega? You want to talk about Matt Cardona? <laughs> all them guys. These motherfuckers is out here doing it, and they're that a money, tag you team. You want to talk about Vince Ultimate McMahon, Dragon? Vince McMahon. Hold on. Let me let me talk to this motherfucker right quick. Plus What's good with you in tag team wrestling, B? You don't like it. That's that's what it is. Bro, like look it. at this shit. Look at how proud. Look at. Did you hear that crowd? Make it make the sense. The thing is, he, like, you're not making it make sense. That he can find you that one guy like that can connect with the crowd. But this is the problem. Everyone on your roster can connect with the crowd. You just don't want them to connect with them because you want the, you want them to only connect to you. Nobody wants to connect to you, Vince. Yeah, he don't. At this point, you can't treat the one. WWE helps, universe but, um, like your own fucking human centipede, and everyone's on your ass. It's a show for one. It's a show for one. We know. We That's know. why it's you got this one. whole situation. It's you a show for one. We know. Right. Let's talk about this match. Sorry, it's, it's <laughs> beef with this motherfucker. You know, no, you sure? fuck that. <laughs> God damn it. Hazel and I over here sure like, like <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me are know you me sure? <laughs> so, so, are you sure AEW is not a show for one? Also, because Tony Khan is just my god, Bruh, Even if it is, since he's one of us, damn near his everything taste he matches put out, are so. <laughs> pow, nigga, yeah, yeah. So that's fine with me. <laughs> so yeah, it starts off Cash Fuck and you, Austin. Man. <laughs> no, enough. It does. It does. Uh, Cash literally spanks this man. He spanks Austin Gunn because he's an ass boy. <laughs> uh, he's like, you want to be an ass boy? I'll spank you like an ass boy. Bam, bam. <laughs> yes, I'm an ass boy. FTR bam, played that bam, literal bam. shit. Uh, then Dan Housen comes in. They cut him off for the heat. Uh, crowd is hot for Dan Housen. Uh, hits a big run on Austin. Then hits a big lariat on Caster. But Colton cuts him off with an even bigger lariat into the pip. Uh, then we come back. Dax gets the hot tag. FTR is running wild. They they hit some German suplexes on the gun club, but then Austin runs in, cuts it off. He goes for the neck breaker, and then they're both down. Dax ends up getting the tag to Danhausen. Danhausen comes in. He sets up for the GTS, but it's interrupted by Anthony Bowens, who can walk. He gets yes. out of the wheelchair. He reveals he that he can miss. walk. Yes. But he's he a dumbass because of what he does next. <laughs> yeah, he goes to attack him with the crutch, but Dan Housen gets out of the way. And then he hits Colton, and then Colton goes down. Dan Housen covers him, gets the one, two, and three. Dan Housen dumbass. and FTR get the dub. Yep. Dumbass, bro. But, and then now post-match, 
the gun club's upset. They're like, what the hell, man? You knocked them out. And But, you know, I guess the acclaimed are trying to appeal. It was an accident. Mm-hmm. We're trying to get Dan Housen. And, you know, they're, they're, they're going back and forth. But then the one to break it up is, is Billy Gunn, Daddy Ass. Daddy and Ass, then, yeah. <laughs> Scissor me, Daddy Ass. Hey, yo. And, and like, hey, it appears that yo. Billy <laughs> is, is not siding with his sons. <laughs> He's no. siding with the acclaimed. He Maybe pushes he really down scissoring. fucking Colton and is like, calm the fuck down. And then the ass boys are like, yo, dad, what the hell? Yep. Can you can you imagine Billy Gunn next week with the acclaim? He got a do-rag on. He, he grabs the mic. He opens his nose like, what up, G's? Now we got Jay Lethal, Sanjay Dutt, Sotnam Singh. They still want Joe to show up by... By yeah. death before dishonor, so they can take that TV title from him. Like they say, you know, current Ring of Honor TV champ versus longest reigning TV, Ring of Honor TV champ. Sodom Singh says, "Hey Joe, Jay's gonna kill you, man." <laughs> Did he laugh evilly? Mm-hmm. I like that. <laughs> it's like he's gonna kill you, man. <laughs> he should have. He should have said. He should have ended with this. Jay's gonna kill you because he's the house of truth. <laughs> oh no, nah, that's a deep cut. <laughs> Facts, man. <laughs> I miss true. I'm yo, dead ass son. Like out of all the managers that I, I really liked and enjoyed in all my years of wrestling, I miss Truth, Truth Martini. Martini. I like Truth Martini. Yes, I miss Truth. I miss Truth very much. Yeah. I, I I I do believe he's still working in the performance center and shit. I think yeah, that's what I last heard. Now we got TBS Championship Open Challenge, which was accepted by Layla Gray. She from Queens. That's what Tass said. Yep. <laughs> she's from Queens, and then New York. <laughs> He was like, I know she's probably a tough girl because I dated a Queens girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I dated a Queens girl. <laughs> and then uh, I think he's married to one now. Yeah, yeah. So tough Taz girls going on out there in Queens. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but now we got Jay Cargill. He's from Brooklyn. I represent Queens. She was she raised, was raised out, out, out in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. <laughs> ah, it's the backwards version though. Jade starts out this batch hooping. She dribbling through <laughs> her legs and shit. Then she goes for a crossbody. <laughs> wow, uh, you know, you know what vibes that gave me? What? Remember that old commercial that they even parodied in a uh, scary movie? Oh, the uh, oh the Nike commercials. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, that one. Oh my God! Squeak, squeak, uh, squeak, squeak. Yeah. <laughs> that was a real. That, that was a time in our history. A wonderful Good times. time. <laughs> yeah. That was a wonderful time when commercials were actually legit watchable. Yeah. Layla makes a short comeback. She goes for the bulldog, but Jade throws her off. Hits the big pump kick. And then grabs her. She's like, are you stupid? And then she lifts her up for Jaded <laughs> and, and puts her down. And that gets the win. <laughs> She's the best. Um, then Stoke goes to talk, but Jay snatches the mic away. She's like, I'm tired of all you fans and all you girls in the back bitching. She says, <laughs> next time, Stokely, I want some real competition. And then Stoke uh. takes the mic back. He's like, yeah, she's fired up. And I think she's I know why. Bars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Says that girl out here, Layla Gray, she don't even work here. She ain't even fill out a W two. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even go here. Yeah, you don't even go like, here. Last time, last time I checked, you were a plant getting kissed by the Lotharios on SmackDown. Yeah. Oh, Home girl, you don't even work here. But she was the one to step up and take Jade's open challenge. Mm-hmm. All you girls in the back didn't do anything. So Athena, Chris Statlander, you two aren't overlooked. You're lazy. And then that brings out Athena and Chris Statlander. They're like, what the fuck you say about us? You they run down smoke? to the ring. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. So they run down. They take out Kira Hogan. They set up Jade for the Eclipse. But then Layla Gray runs back in, and she mm-hmm. helps out the heels. I guess that Potential was that Stokes behest. Yeah, she wants to be a baddie. I was just like, wait, what the fuck? Yeah. What are you doing? And they kind of like scoffed her off at the end. But I feel like, hey, potential baddie. Yeah, because Stoke was like, hey, yeah, yeah, she a baddie. And Jade was like, get the fuck out of here. She ain't fuck no that. fucking baddie. <laughs> like, I, whoop, I just whooped her ass. Ain't no way she joining us. Shut, shut the front door on her. I'm not going to. Cut the shit. I'm not going to lie. I like I like the guitars and Jade's theme song. It just it feels epic every time. And yeah, that shit is cool. Oh, my God. Those <laughs> fucking <laughs> riffs. I was like, ooh. Those high riffs, though, I was yeah. just like, man. It feels like, you know what it feels like? I'm going to say this so I can get it out of my head. It feels like a female version of, of the current day rock theme song. Oh, okay, okay. I can get, you know that. I can get Speaking that. Speaking of the rock, did you hear you got like, instead of just having fucking 90 something cousins, he has five He has like nine something siblings, siblings now? <laughs> oh, yeah. Apparently his dad had a bunch of kids that, secret kids. 
Mm-hmm. So it's like it's like that Eminem song, family fighting and fussing over who wants to invite me to supper. All of a sudden, I got nice some cousins, cousins. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> I got five brothers and sisters who haven't seen me, and you even bother to call me until you saw me on TV. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All that. All That's that. a yes. fact. <laughs> yes, but I guess in this case, yes. it's <laughs> we're calling you because we didn't know you were our brother until now. <laughs> Facts, yeah. Now we got the Young Bucks. They're in the back with their titles, but they're unhappy because, man, we got the titles, but all our friends are, are gone. Everybody's yeah. hurt. Kyle's hurt. Bobby's hurt. Even Brandon Cutler's not here. We got that's some intern that's filming this right now. His name is Freddie. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you're, you're doing a good job, I guess. Fred holding the camera straight. Uh, then they're like, you know, well, we heard Goto and Yoshihashi. They want a shot at our titles. How about hey, we do this? Go to. Yeah, go to because <laughs> they it was it was all a setup for a pun. <laughs> um, and he's like, yeah, we'll give you a match of Rampage non-title, and if you can beat us, we'll give you a shot at the titles. So it's gonna be go Goto and Yoshihashi versus the Bucks on Rampage. Hey, yo, I go found to? it weird that throughout that whole promo that they were cutting. Notice how they didn't mention Kenny Omega at all. Well, Kenny been hurt, so yeah. well, I mean, I actually so, heard a like, rumor saying that like he's like. If he's when, well, when oh. he gets better this time, if he gets a, another serious setback like that, he's probably going to retire. Well, yeah, he said yeah. that. He he said that he was on the stream the other day. He was like, "Yeah, if I I get another setback, then I'm probably done because yeah. I can't keep doing this. You know, two days of painful ass rehab and you know all that. So hopefully, exactly. let's, let's let's hope that Kenny's rehab you know goes well and you know yeah. he eventually is able to make his way back. But yeah. um. Well, you know, da, 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 da. we got da, 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 da. that. We got hold on. We got oh, that on rampage, <laughs> and then we also got the royal rampage yeah, on rampage. The royal rampage. <laughs> which, from what it sounds like, is basically a combination of the Royal Rumble and World and, War Three. World War Three. Yeah, which I kind of two did. rings. Yeah, two rings instead of three, but I, I like it. With it. I you know always they recorded this on the same night. I'm just because it was like, yo, there's three rings. There's all these people. This is crazy. This is so <laughs> like much 20 madness. Guy, 20 mm. guys on, in three rings. They're gonna, they got to fight each other and all this shit. I was like, yo, this is insane. And then, nothing. like, in the other matches, they would they, they would use the ring. Like, I always remember, like, who would be doing <laughs> a springboard from one ring to the other. Shit like that. It's cool. Yep. Hogan would be switching rings because Hogan was a troll. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, dude. <laughs> uh... I, I think that's a smart idea. I mean, if you're recording it on the same night as Blood and Guts, you got those two rings, use it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Get a get a fun gimmick out of it. So I think that's what they do now when you when you go to the live shows, like you stay there because yeah. you gotta do rampage. So Yeah, yeah usually they take rampage after wrestling. dynamite. So yeah. Yeah. So Royal this Royal 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 or, or or if if you want to, if you really want to tire out your fucking fans, you make them stay long and be like, hey, guess what, guys? We got a dark show to do. <laughs> we're not doing. You guys want to stay flat? Nobody doing. It. Like that'd be crazy. Yeah. They they usually do nah. dark before. So <laughs> yeah, they do dark before as the people are coming in. So they do three shows. Yeah. That's fucking. But the the, crazy. the first show is really like really short, and and it's like they they're they've got it set up in a way where. They don't really have to tire out the fans because it's usually as they're coming into the to the arena. Yeah. So uh uh-huh. Okay. So now, now by God Almighty, out of the heel tunnel <laughs> comes Jim Ross. <laughs> I'm a heel. <laughs> by God. Uh, <laughs> and he joins the crew. <laughs> Did, he get lost? JR. <laughs> Did he get lost? No, he going. If I had to guess, he came out of the hill tunnel because it's close to the desk. <laughs> yeah. So he ain't got to do all that walking across yeah. the stage. They were like, Jim, just go through. It's fine. You're, you're. <laughs> I was just waiting for him to get a mic and just cut and just cut a skating. <laughs> you damn people. <laughs> Yo, Taz made me. Well, Taz made me. Me feel like damn, yo, Jim is really old. <laughs> he goes, yeah, yeah, nah, they it were me like, feel like a kid again. Every time I see him, I'm like, yo, damn, nigga. <laughs> yeah, because Excalibur was like, you know, Taz, you're a man who's seen almost everything in this business. And then when Jim, when Jr. comes out, Taz is like, yeah, but Jr. He's actually seen everything in this business. He makes yep. you feel like a kid again. Yeah, he's been in this business since fucking '74. So, but yeah. damn, yo, he made me feel like damn, yo, Jim Ross is old, damn. 
JR been out here for a long time. I, I, yo, I love Jim Ross, man. I'm, I'm yeah. not, yo, it's not just because I'm an Austin Mark. It's literally because, like, I don't think of anybody whose voice I hear in my head other than Jim Ross when I, when I used to play with my figures. Now as an adult, like, playing the video games, I, I don't listen to the stupid-ass fucking commentary they do. In my head, I'm hearing Jim Ross going, Oh, my God, the angel of death, 6 x is whooping his ass. He's whooping him like a government mule. He's over here. He's running. Look at his opponent. He's running like a scalded dog. Like a scalded <laughs> dog. He whipped that one out in this match. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, JR, it's like Justin Roberts said on the intro, the voice yeah. of professional wrestling. He is. Yep. He really is. Yep. Um. So now we get the big Blood and Guts video package featuring Beautiful. Dean Malenko. Yeah, Ruby Soho. Who you know. Destination unknown. Uh, yeah, she's like, you know. I think I told you guys that like, Dean Malenko was still in the company. Yeah, yeah he'd been there. <laughs> when he, nah, but when it's, just, you guys it's always that, like, good to see would... him, though. It's just, that's all it is. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, Ruby talking about how, you know, uh, Eddie Kingston don't tr- trust a lot of people. I'm one of the people he trusts. And then the other ones are in this match. You know, Santana Ortiz and, uh, you know, John Moxley. You know what but I just got in my head, which is weird? And I want to say it now before I forget. The one of the guys in this match, Claudio, they gave him a fake version of the Malenko Steam song. Oh, in WWE, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy, right? Oh no. Wait, are we talking about the um the, the James Bond thing? Yep, the original one that they should never have switched from. The one that they ended up adding words to and adding hip hop drums to. And then it was Oh Zivre. god, that was horrible. That was horrible. Yeah. That's something about through. a dead fish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that song. Um, Me too. Oh yeah, he had he had Oksana with him as his valet. Oh yeah, that's, around that time. That's a deep. And cut. he was and he was playing. He he had like what a fucking rugby gimmick. Yeah, yeah, he was kicked out Where of the rugby league because he was too violent or some shit like that. And he's and what? The, like the, he had a rugby gimmick and he spoke about like nine to ten fucking languages mm-hmm. every time. Which they cut, does. Every time he like cut a, a package promo, it's like he cuts a di- uh, he talks in a different language and shit, a different dialect. Yeah. Whole well, ass fake backstory. That's Claudio Castagnoli. Before but you he, know what? Before even oh. he comes out, did you see the fucking Backstreets back outfit they got these motherfuckers? <laughs> Yeah, the the jazz is my man. Like, <laughs> my man, they look they look like the dicks and the Chippendales put together. Show me okay. the meaning of being lonely. The leaders, <laughs> in sports, entertainment. <laughs> These fucking outfits, my nigga, they look like Chippendales dances. <laughs> That's the outfit of some sports entertainers. Let me tell you, yo, hey, come on, those niggas look so fucky. <laughs> I wanted to down the bottle of Patron that I had right next to me the minute I saw that, but I'm like, wait, I don't want to get that fucked up while watching this fucking match. No, because it's it's just it's at this point now, like it's hokey, it's stupid. Oh god! But it's entertaining. It's entertaining. <laughs> it's sports it's entertaining. entertaining as hell. <laughs> it's sports entertainment. Sports entertainment. And the <laughs> fact that like Tony Khan is allowing all this, and this is this is not just like a blatant shot at WWE. This is just this is mocking them for what they do. AEW Galaxy sports entertainers, the funny outfits, and like come on, Yo, man. I said Garcia it. The, the jazz, silky... their gimmick is WWE. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally the gimmick. Yo, Daniel Garcia had a silky under his fedora. I started crying. Daniel Garcia <laughs> was fucking durag kill me. <laughs> he looked, he looked Cuban as hell, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he looked Daniel like a Cuban Garcia... mobster. Daniel Garcia looked like he was trying to join Griselda Yo, the, with that do-rag on. <laughs> the mesh shirts. No, and it was a silky. It wasn't even a do-rag. It was a fucking silky. It was a... Uh, de- yo, my nigga. It wasn't even a poly. It was a legit silky, bro. It was so... so you could see the silky shine on the top of his fucking head. This nigga don't All have velvety wings. and shit. <laughs> you could uh, tell the minute he took that off, he had the silky smooth waves and shit. That nigga did not. <laughs> He did like, not. you don't mess he with the not. Zohan. That's my he wants to make you silky smooth. He did not have waves, bro. Hell no. I sacrificed I, my hair. Y'all niggas wear silkies and die getting waves out of it. Fucking the game up. It looks like there's been enough talk. It's time 
for the, for the main, main event. The main Even. event. Blood and guts. The Blackpool Combat Club, Eddie Kingston, Santana and Ortiz, Wheeler Yuta, John Moxley, and Claudio Castagnoli versus the Jericho Appreciation Society, Chris Jericho, Sammy Guevara 2.0, Jake Hager, and Daniel Garcia. Sammy Guevara starts number one for the Jazz, and Claudio starts for the BCC. And Regal puts over this man big time. Talks about how how we talked about uh, during Forbidden Door. This was the man that retired, William Regal. And when Regal talked about that, this was my last opponent in the ring. Mm-hmm. He stomped on my head, and I do not compete anymore. <laughs> That's how he, he put this. He man was in. also putting over Mox when Mox was doing his entrance. He yeah, was like, yeah. "If there's anybody you want in a blood and gut as your partner in a blood and guts match, it's this guy." And he also put over yeah. Eddie. He put everybody over. I love this guy, man. Yeah, Regal. He knows how to do that work. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, t- <laughs> so, yeah, Claudio was Regal's last ever opponent. And the way Claudio starts uppercutting Sammy in this shit is looking like, like he's trying to be Sammy's last opponent, too. He's killing this man with uppercuts. Savage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to the point where Sammy just flip. He literally just flips away. He just jumps on the ropes and then jumps into the other ring. And he's like, ah, thank you. <laughs> <The> crowd boos. <laughs> Yo, by the way, did you notice they were booing during the countdowns? What the fuck was that I'll about? I'll tell you what it is. There was no buzzer. There was yeah. no alarm, no buzzer, uh, no nothing. So the crowd would chant, Err, and then they wouldn't hear Err, so they would boo right after every time they would say Err, because they were like, I thought the, something. I thought, for a minute, <laughs> I, thought a minute, I thought for a minute the crowd was imitating a really loud fart. No, they, 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 were, they were pissed, bro. They were just like, yo, where's the fucking buzzer? <laughs> where's our buzzer? <laughs> But, yeah, um, I peeped it. I yeah. was like, "Ah, oh, I get it," because <laughs> they were so they reveal, everybody. Yeah. So they reveal here that the Jazz has the man advantage, as it yes. should be. He'll should They've always have the like advantage 20 in times, more games. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, because they won the match at Forbidden Door, which gave them the advantage. Yeah, and yeah, you know, he should always have the advantage in, in war games. That's how it should work. Uh, Sammy goes over to to make out with Ty Conti, but Cesaro catches him and starts to swing this man. Yep. But that burns enough time for Daniel Garcia to enter blood and guts with the silky on. <laughs> yep. And this is exactly and what it sounded like. Five, four, three, two, one. And Wait, where's the buzzer? <laughs> where's the fucking buzzer? No buzzer. Where's the buzzer? So no buzzer. <laughs> no buzzer? Okay, now the crowd got to fucking be, gotta be the goddamn buzzer <laughs> now. I'll do it <laughs> myself. Uh and then after this, we go to Pip, which at which point I was like, Tony, you fool. But luckily, I was watching uh, on the fight feed, so I, I saw it all. <laughs> I didn't um, see shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I didn't get to hear shit. I just saw it in picture in picture. Fucking, For the multiple times they had this on commercials. Yeah. At least you got Garcia. to see what was going on. I didn't see I didn't even get to see most of it. You saw, you saw so more real. than I did. I it, didn't see shit. It's so I saw fucking small. I saw Moderna fucking and, and fucking Luterta and, 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 and go fuck yourself Erda watching, commercials. Watching Nigga, what the shit, fuck? <laughs> watching this shit in picture in picture is like sitting in the nosebleed sections at a baseball game Watching them squint your eyes so close, like they're fucking ants and shit. Like, and that's nah, still bro. better than seeing nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, I saw it all. I got to see. Damn it, Tevin. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. I got to see Daniel Garcia choking out Claudio with his do rag. <laughs> he took it all, started choking out Claudio with it. The crowd is chanting for Wheeler Yuta. Mm. Um, and then, then I think that's when they come back from break and. The, the countdown goes, and entry number two for the BCC is Wheeler Yuta. Wait a minute. I also saw him choking him with the with the silky. And I saw, I saw Wheeler Yuta choking the other guy with a T-shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because at that point. They're paying, they're paying homage to Brian Danielson because at this point, you can't fire these guys for doing what they did there because it's TV 14. Yeah, it's bloody PG. guts. <laughs> it's supposed to be that. <laughs> you can't, you can't choke people with ties. <laughs> Like, we got to sell toys. Ain't nobody saying nothing about a silky, though. What are you doing (laughs) choking people out with fucking silkies and ties and shit? We got to sell toys for children. (laughs) Fuck out of (laughs) here. They got to fucking sell a toy, Daniel Garcia, with a silky. Hell (laughs) yeah, hell yeah. (laughs) Nah, I want it. Him and Isaiah Cassidy need to both be wearing silkies. Him and Isaiah Cassidy. Man, just call them Team Silky. Get a whole row of of wrestlers with silkies Nah, we ain't breaking a private party. Get out of here with that. 
The next entrant is in for the Jess, and it's Jake Hager who clears the ring, and then he faces off with his old real American partner, and- which the crowd recognizes, mm-hmm. and they give a We, we the People the chant. People. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm just like, Commentators talk about it too. That- These two were a very successful tag team. So, yeah. And the first thing I thought was, wasn't that from Bad Creative years ago and we weren't supposed to say that shit? <laughs> <laughs> nah, Didn't nah. I'm going to tell you what it is. I'm going to tell you what it is. show of AEW. What happened? Jericho said that on the second yeah, yeah. AEW show. Yeah. But to be honest, like, that, it was over. It was over at the end of the day. So No, it really was. Like, to see them back in the ring against each other was kind of like, oh. And then the fact that they're both the, the hosses of the match, it was like, oh, big horse fight after that. Yeah. 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 So I like, and I like, I like how the commentators, and Regal, again, in particular, just talking about how, you know, these two were a tag team. They know each other in and out. They know what the other is going to do before they do it. So I, I like that little bit. Like Regal, as usual, knowing how to put everybody over in all the little spots. Tevin um, almost went British there. <laughs> I was here. <laughs> that's why I really enjoyed um, Regal's commentary in NXT. Mm-hmm. Yeah. While yeah. throughout the throughout the minimum time that he was doing that, I really enjoyed it because he actually knows how to put a guy over in the match by giving them the knowledge that we all fucking need. We all need to know a character's background. We all need to know their story. We all need to know their motives as to why they're doing this. We don't need to know what the fuck is going on outside of wrestling. We need to know what's going on inside the ring. <laughs> like, I don't care about Nicki Minaj putting out another single. I want to know what's going on in the ring. That's a fact. William Regal knows how to always keep it centered on what's going on in the ring. And now, speaking of what's going on in the ring, the next entrant. Is John Moxley? Hell yeah! And the new the New York niggas. I know it was them because it was them last year. They slip him a fork and he starts to stabby stab <laughs> on Daniel Garcia. <laughs> it was our boys. Our boys was like, "Yo, bro, <laughs> yo, 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 yeah." yeah. <laughs> and skewers, and skewers, yeah, skewers. And skewers. Hey man, we don't we don't talk like, when it comes to the skewers and all that other shit. I'm like, Masada is crying somewhere. Because he's fucking proud that the skewers were actually being used on national television. Now we need to get G. Raver crying by getting tattoo needles on someone's fucking head. Wow. <laughs> there are a lot of deathmatch guys at this match talking about feeling validated. Like, don't don't call the shit we do trash. It's on the yep. big stage now. Yeah. And facts. Exactly. So, yeah, Mox is in there stabbing Daniel Garcia. <laughs> and he's bleeding now. <laughs> yep. And then Claudio and Yuta drop toehold Sammy onto a chair. Then the three of them just start practicing moves on Sammy Guevara. <laughs> <laughs> They'll pop up into a cutter, hammer elbows, fucking they're just doing shit to him. They're bullying him. But you know what this is to me when it when it's blood and guts? This is what happens when you're in jail and they take away your cigarettes and you just start fucking rioting. <laughs> that's Damn. what it is. Of course, Sammy was in the middle <laughs> of a fucking is. prison riot, getting his ass whooped. Yeah, that's what this whole thing was. It was a prison riot because they just said, "Fuck it, we're we're taking away the one thing that you love the most, and that's your tobacco. Your tobacco. Ted, your- <laughs> and you're out here fighting for your life." Uh, but the next entrant for the Jazz is Cool Hand and Angelo Parker. He's in the ring now. Uh, but he's outnumbered, so he starts, he's running like a scalded dog. dog. He starts running all across the cage trying to get away. Mm-hmm. But Claudio catches him, and then they start to bully him. They, they start to beat him down, but then the heels break it up. And, and they start working him over again. So now we need another baby face, and the next baby face in is Ortiz. He starts yep. hot going into the picture in picture. He got the Taino um, face paid on. He looks crazy. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was Kratos for a minute. Nah, yeah, Kratos would have had the more of the thing on the side. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, like he he had he had like the the the, the Kratos colors and shit. And I'm like, but then Kenny explained to me what it was. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, the colors match, but the arrangement of our yeah, it's, yeah. it's way more Taino Indian than yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, during the break, Mox he grabbed a bag, and I'm like, oh yeah, thumbtacks. It's not thumbtacks. <laughs> it's fucking glass. <laughs> it's glass. Yep, shards Broken of glass. glass. Shards of glass. He takes Angelo Parker over. Pal drives Cool Hand Ange on the glass, and the crowd rightly chants at him, You sick fuck. You <laughs> sick fuck. <laughs> you sick fuck. You sick fuck. Let me tell you something. You sick fuck. If y'all, y'all can talk all this shit you want about these quote-unquote sports entertainers, 
But the fact that they were doing this shit and doing it the way they were doing it and taking all these hits, they kind of got my respect. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Daniel Garcia's I mean, over here in La La Land and shit. taking all these hits in <laughs> fucking Anarchy in the Arena match. They gave my respect, bro. These motherfuckers is crazy. <laughs> these motherfuckers, it, but they were here to... to Take violence, copious amounts of violence. And Mox ain't done being a sick fuck either. He runs over to the corner and starts stabbing Jake Hager. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> Krause chain, blood and guts. And we're back. It's now time for Daddy Magic, Matt Menard. He comes in. He's got a chair in his hand. And the Jazz once again takes control. Krause chain for tables. So the countdown goes. And the next entrance arrives. And it's Santana. He brings in a table to appease right. the crowd and a barbed wire bat. I like that Santana is the weapons guy for yes. blood and guts. Every <laughs> yes. Because last year, he but was then, the weapons guy too. But then shit happens. It's the dudes but, from the hood talking about, oh, I know how this goes. Hold on. <laughs> oh, a prison so fight, you say? So okay, I know how that worked. <laughs> so apparently the guy, so apparently Santana lasted two minutes in the match. Does a urinagi, but lands awkwardly on his fucking... Everyone's saying that it's his ankle or it's knee, but literally, he was... He couldn't get up throughout yeah, most of the yeah. match. He had to drag himself... He dragged himself out of the cage match, and he had people carrying him out, so that's why we didn't see him yeah. throughout the whole entire and match I think he even, that, which, I think he even hurt his elbow on that one, because... Not his elbow, yeah, his shoulder. Which, mm-hmm. That too. So it was like... It was a... It was a huge fucking bummer that was like... Damn, we knew out of all the people, like, it, like it had to be him. Like, we really wanted to see what what he was gonna do in this match. This is the second time that he's in a blood and gun. Like, everyone that was in the inner circle is having their second blood and guts match. Everyone else here is a virgin. Yep, popping their fucking cherries for the first yep. time. So the inner circle guys had the experience, but to see. A freak accident like this happened off of a year and Nagi because guess what, guys? You're both Nagis, all right? <laughs> it, they like it had to come from that fucking injury. No, you're and a Nagi. It had to come from that spot. So no, many times in wrestling, it, it's yeah. like that. When you know, because people always talk about what you can do to prevent injuries. Sometimes it ain't shit you can do. Yeah. Shit just happens. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, accidents happen. How many Santana's probably done that a million times? Yep. That fucking year and Nagi. Yep. And and it's just this one time it goes wrong, and you you can't you can't blame anybody for it. It's just a freak accident, like yep. Hazel said. So, yeah, you know. it's like how many times how many times have we seen Triple H pull out a spine buster, and then that there's that one time where it's like, oh, I blew up my quad. Exactly, like it's just it's the luck of the draw, and this and this time Santana was unfortunately unlucky. So you know, hopefully he he gets well soon. Hopefully it's not too serious of an injury. So Santana, he goes down, he goes out, and then fucking John Moxley <laughs> starts. He brings out goddamn skewers and mm-hmm. just stabs fucking Matt Renard with the skewers and in the fucking forehead. in the forehead. Just he took like he took out a bunch and just put them in his yep. forehead and just went. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I never. Fuck, I, and then he kind of like held them. Out. He held them. Yeah, because you you, ha- you have to hold them. You have to hold them just like jam them shits fucking in. Like, have you not God. seen a Matt Tremont match? No, of course I have, but that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, as a visual, it's just like... Yeah, it's a ah, sick visual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... And plus, you know, this is the, it's the first time that, like, shit like this gets exposed on national television. Yeah, yeah. And, no, and everyone that's there in the live audience has probably seen this, but has never seen this, you know, live in a big stage. Where it's like, oh, that's not allowed. We can't do that shit. Yeah. Well, this is fucking wrestling, motherfucker. Let oh, let the professionals do what they need to do, and watch them work. Like, and let, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see if the crowd loves it. Guess what? The crowd, the crowd fucking loved it. It crazy. brings me back to the days of Tevin's title belt. Facts. <laughs> Facts. You know what's going on out here. I got it upside ECW, down. But you know what's going ECW, on. ECW. ECW. Uh, so yeah. But ECW never never used skewers. They didn't need to. They did they, so much other shit that fucking. They used a bunch of other shit. <laughs> that, that, that goes to CZ Dub. CZ Dub. CZ Dub. CZ Dub was yep, the yep. one. Um, but now we got Yuta and Garcia. They meet each other in the middle of the two rings and just start slapping the shit out of each other. 
Yep. Crowd starts going <laughs> crazy for it. I'm like, yo, they wallet. <laughs> that's the only that's the only time that I got mad at the camera people because I was like, yo, what are you doing? Stop pointing at the crowd. Yeah, like yeah, point yeah. at them. They slapping they missed, the absolute yeah. shit out of each they other. They missed that one. I'm like, damn, man, they're going yeah. crazy. And you hear the and crowd. And that's what the crowd was reacting to. So yeah, they should have shot that. So um then Jericho, he comes in now, the last entrant for the Jazz, and he comes in with Floyd. Uh so immediately the crowd starts chanting for Eddie Kingston. Mm-hmm. Um, Claudio comes in, hits the Alpamere water slide on Jake Hager, which hell yeah, he's bringing back all his old school shit. <laughs> yep. Uh, then, he's bringing back all the Jakara stuff. Yeah. Then Garcia's got to eat some Swiss, Swiss death, big uppercut. And then Jericho cuts him off with the code breaker. But now the clock counts down and it's time for the final entrant for blood and guts. Eddie Kingston comes in and the match has now officially begun. And I like how Eddie Kingston is just like, Get the fuck out of my way. Yeah. Get out of my way. <laughs> I want the Canadian. Give me, give like, me Jericho. Give me Jericho. Like, give me what I want. <laughs> this man was one track minded. No, no, no. Give me Jericho. <laughs> and then Eddie, he, he goes into his pocket, pulls out fucking rubbing alcohol. And he looks like he's going to murder this man, but Jake Haker stops him. So then it goes away and then it cuts back to fucking Jericho and Ty Conti who have got their own, I guess, bottle of alcohol and they're trying to, she's trying to pass it to him in the cage, but I guess it got nah, stuck. Nah, it's the same bottle, but the thing is that the bottle, they, it didn't have, uh, even though it didn't have the cap on, it still had the foil on, so it had like little holes in it. But then the problem is it couldn't, it didn't want to fit through the thing. So if you see, if you pay attention, some of the fucking alcohol squirts out. <laughs> As she's putting it in. Yeah, when she's passing it through, yeah. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Didn't they already have alcohol in the doing? cage? <laughs> no, it, like, it fell out is what happened. Yeah. It took a whole minute for them to actually like get that shit like right through it. Yeah, because like, like the camera's oh, on fuck. Jericho and Ty Conti mm-hmm. trying to make this exchange. And then I guess they realize, oh, this is going to take them a minute, like, I guess. You were, and you they, they cut away. for 20 seconds. And I'm like, you mean it's something like you couldn't just switch to another camera shot? You had these guys on for 20 seconds. I think everybody knew right there. What the hell? What the hell they were doing? Well, yeah, yeah I think they, they were just trying to show. Oh, Ty Conti's getting them the the alcohol, but then they couldn't quite get it. I guess they expect yeah. them to get it quicker than they did. So, nah, I, I honestly, I, that's what it was, bro. It's, it's basically it fell in through that little slip between the cage and 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 that that little platform that they have there, and it went under the cage, and then she grabbed it from under to pass it to Jericho. But there's no way to get it through that way. So, like, the only thing they could have done is either open, uh, what, like, I think there was a door on that side as well. It would be open that door or basically shove it back under the thing and pray to God that somehow Jericho's arms decide to stretch Armstrong through that shit, which is not going to happen. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Now, fucking, where the hell? No. Oh. Now. We pull out another, we pull out another bag, and this one is thumbtacks. Yes. And it's yeah. a lot of yep. thumbtacks. And everywhere. I, yeah. yeah, they're everywhere. That whole second ring, pretty much half of it is fucking mm-hmm. thumbtacks on the mat. And then in the other ring, they're fucking pulling up the pulling canvas the, and shit. Yep. So there's nowhere safe to land. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this place is now a death trap. <laughs> either you're either you're gonna get hurt or you're gonna get hurt. There's no, yeah. Ain't there's no, no way, way around it. About it yet. Ain't no way around it. Mm-hmm. Uh, fucking Mox grabs Daddy Magic, suplexes him onto the tax. Then we just see Angelo Parker hanging on the truss by a leg outside of the cage, just bloodied, hanging upside down like a sacrifice. That should look crazy. Yo, that looked nasty. Yeah, that looked my nasty. man. It just gave like that gave me vibes of like Jimmy Jacobs in the middle of the ring in all white, while Jay Briscoe is like. Dangling on his feet upside down, like 11, blood 12 all over feet everybody. in the air, and the blood is dripping all over Jimmy Jacobs as he, as he's cutting this fucking promo of the age of the fallen in his all white outfit. My fucking God. You know what it should have reminded you of? It should have reminded you of his job. Mo- <laughs> well, that too. Fuck that. Why wasn't John Moxley on his knees, like, on, like, like this when fucking Angelo uh, Parker was like upside down and, like, right <laughs> yeah. there that right there that would have been like ooh he was, that right there could have been in a magazine cover mm-hmm. he was busy trying to choke Matt Menard out he had the bulldog choke on him 
Uh, but no, yeah, murder, murder. I just, that, I just, that was, that I was saw murder. literally. You see when they cut the animal's head off and let, to let the blood drip. Yeah, <laughs> that that's what it reminded me of. <laughs> just you cut the dude. animal's head off and then you hang it up to let the blood drip out. Oh, you mean like the fucking uh, the livestock places yeah, that they have yeah, in New yeah, York? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my yeah. god. So, so then, uh, he, yeah, Mox has got the bulldog choke on Matt Menard, but then Jericho breaks it up. He splashes the alcohol on Mox's on his face, ah. on his wound, and Mox is bleeding because you know he cut himself at the pay per view. Ah. Yeah. Then he hits the Judas effect. God damn it! Then Woo! Mox. <laughs> <laughs> And it has begun. Yep, it you has know what begun. I was thinking in my head? Da, 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 da. I walk for miles. Inside <laughs> this old danger. It, that was a little my, yeah. <laughs> my first Ooh. thought was, break the wall down. <laughs> you know what got you? Uh, so Mox goes What's for the Death Rider name, DDT. <laughs> but then Jericho reverses. It's the DDT on Mox onto the tax. Jericho dra- Jericho drags Moxley across the tax. That shit was nasty. Uh, then he put on the walls. Wrong. I was like, ooh, that's brutal. Wow, wow having him still. Uh. Yo, Moose Moose did that to Sammy Callahan at Slammiversary. Like he he had him on the ground on there they go again. Hey, this, yeah, just go. <laughs> there there was on the, he was on the ground, like grabbing by the legs and was dragging him on the thumbtacks and like would have been more sinister if Sammy didn't have, like, a vest and a button-up shirt on. Because, <laughs> like, uh, don't play it safe. If you're going to do a monster's ball, at least, like, go all out. But we're going to get a, uh, 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 I believe it was a Ravens Clock Tower of Fun match. Oh, my God. Between these two. Mm. Uh, I I don't know when that fuck that is. I think that's the next pay-per-view. That's not crazy. Or maybe that was, or maybe that was earlier, uh, in a few hours ago because I didn't record Impact. Mm. Oh yeah, you got to check out Impact. But yeah, that sounds crazy. Yeah, I no, I didn't watch Impact at all. I was, just, I was waiting on you guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, Jericho's got on the walls, but then Eddie comes in for the save by throwing a bunch of attacks in Jericho's face. He just, he just grabs a handful <laughs> and then just fuck you. <laughs> you wanna, you wanna throw fireballs? <laughs> Here's a thumbtack ball. Boom. <laughs> like, you want to be a wizard? I'm going to throw fucking tax at you. Yeah. That, that's my wizardry. That's my magic. <laughs> that's my sorcery. Yeah. So I'm a sorcerer. You're so, a wizard. So motherfuckers over here got fucking <laughs> superpowers and shit. I throw tax. <laughs> I throw fireballs. <laughs> oh, God. Tev, what do you I, throw? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I guess I'd be a wizard. I, I throw the fireball. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I, I thought you would have said you throw basketballs. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he shoot, he shoot, basketball. I'm going to want to keep that, though. It's time to hoop. Fuck that. I ain't trying to fight no more. <laughs> I, 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 could call, I could call myself a wizard. I mean, a wizard because I throw my fucking belt all over the place. I'm a oh, smoke yeah. thrower. <laughs> <laughs> a smoke bender. <laughs> if you want to smoke, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, that's a cease and desist. We don't want the street profits getting on our ass now. Let, let him try. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jericho, he fends Eddie off with a fire extinguisher. And then fucking Ty Conti knocks out Aubrey Edwards, I guess that was. But the camera missed it. And then she grabs the key. And she opens up the door and Jericho escapes. But then Ruby Soho runs down like, all right, that's enough of you. And she whoops her ass. And then Jericho foolishly climbs to the top of the cage, yep. despite this being the thing that led to him losing last year. But I digress. <laughs> Wasn't there a backstory that they said that uh, Ruby and Eddie like have have good history together? Didn't they mention that in the match? Yeah, yeah they, they mentioned that in, in the video package. Yeah, yeah. So okay. yeah, they set it uh, up. So yeah, you know, Ruby. It made sense. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So Eddie follows Jericho up to the top, hits him with an hurricane. And then he's going to kill this man. He's going to throw him off. He's going to murder him. But Sammy Guevara makes the save. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy Guevara. Sammy Guevara. Jim Ross and William Regal are straight up just talking about uh, Taker versus Mankind in Hell in a Cell. Mm-hmm. I remember the last time something like that happened, I was there. 1998. I was, wait- I was waiting for him off. to say the fucking line. Yeah. But I'm like, damn, he can't say it. But at least they made they made a shirt for him out of it. Just yeah, to yeah. celebrate all those years of 98 Hell in a Cell, King yeah. of the Ring. Damn, yo, Sammy Guevara did. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Eddie makes Sammy pay for fucking saving Jericho by throwing him off the top, 
crashing through the the whole table and set up below, which I thought was a much better much visual better. than last year's finish. <laughs> Words. <laughs> And it wasn't even the finish. <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't. They, they, learned, no, it they wasn't. learned. They learned. <laughs> they learned. They learned. So this is what bugged me about about the finish. I, I want I want to talk about the finish. So after this whole thing with Sammy getting chucked off the fucking cage into the tables, we had um, Jericho being put in the stretch plum by Eddie Kingston, but we also had Claudio Castagnoli. Matt Menard up there also. Mm -hmm. Matt Menard is being placed in the sharpshooter. Gentlemen, guess who tapped out first? Mm. Matt Menard. And guess who's pissed off about it? Mm. Yeah, uh, Matt. And Menard. guess who's gonna have? And guess who's gonna have a fight with him at fucking all out because of this mm. shit? Well, that was well. You, you skipped over the giant swing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fucking oh, yeah, Claudio the, 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 swung the, Jericho on yeah, top the, of the cage. Yep. If there was ever a moment that I was so scared for both of these guys to do that swing, it was this moment right here. So you I'm know how much you got to trust a motherfucker to let them swing you on the top of a cage? That's trust. Yo, this was, giving, this was giving me, like, you know, the wrestling video game vibes. Like, you just swing around and you keep moving and moving, and then you both fall off the cage. One false move. You're done. They were, the fact that, like, Jericho looked like he was, like, Two seconds of flying off the edge is just like he, a crazy ass visual to me. It's just my man. He looks like he him, was about to seeing shit his, his hair like hang over the side of the cage. It's like ah, fuck, 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 fuck. It was that should look crazy. <laughs> but um, yeah, like like Hazel said. Uh, then after that, double submission, and it, it it goes right back to Eddie and Claudio's Chikara history. That was one of the reasons that. Eddie hated Claudio, stealing yep. wins and shit from me. <laughs> and here he goes again. He finds him condescending. Like he, that's what they said on commentary. That he finds him condescending. Yeah. He's like Goku in the Abridged series. He's just stealing wins, yeah. stealing the victory. But to be honest, in this case, like he was helping him. So I don't see it that way. But who knows? Well, yeah. we, we, here's the thing. I don't think the audience was supposed to see it that way. I think what we're supposed to see is the way Eddie sees it, that's how he sees it. And the way that he sees it is, this was supposed to be my moment, my angle, my rivalry. Who the fuck are you to take my moment away from me? Yeah. But at the same and time, I want to fight you. At the same time, if you peep, when Claudio was trying to like pick him up, right? He says, yeah. he goes, he goes, he looks at him, he goes, give me a second, my back is hurt. I'm okay, but I, I'm hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. I think Eddie so, got hurt from, so from that he, match. It wasn't. Back it injury. was. It didn't seem like beef. It was more like, oh shit! Like, give me a second. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I yeah. think the the way Eddie and, and I, I liked it actually because it, mm -hmm. it it felt realistic. Like Eddie's upset. Like, damn, I wanted to fucking beat Jericho. That's what yeah. I wanted. I wanted to get revenge. But at the same time, but I'm he's hurt. like, all right, gotta... I'm hurt. We won. It's fine. We're good. We're good. Because him yeah. and Claudio at the end. They shake hands, they dap yep. up, they hug. He so. picks them up eventually, and then uh, yeah, yeah. Him, and, him and Ortiz and, and, and Claudio, they, they lift each other's hands and shit. Yeah. And the sad thing about the whole thing is, Santana should have been up there with them. Yeah, Facts. but he, he got hurt, man. And yeah, they had to tend to him. So. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. he ends up being all right, like not too crazy. So. Yeah, so that, that's blood and guts. BCC gets the win. They fucking beat the shit out of the of the jazz. It, it, was it, it was what I felt like was the right conclusion to yep. this match. Fucking yep. the sports entertainers finally get their due. Yep. They get their asses whooped in an environment that these men are just built for. That yep. they've been saying in all the promos. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, great match. I mean, the finish is definitely better than last year's finish. Yep. But overall, like I, I, I love both matches. I love last year's match and I love this yeah. year's match. So I don't know which one I like more. It's, it's a tough call for me. But I, I had a ton of fun with this. Yeah. I say I, I, I like this one a little better. Just because of the fact that it felt way, I don't know, like more, even more personal to me, you know? The yeah. other ones was more like, oh, we're competitors, you know? We're like, we're, we're, we don't like you, but you know, at the end of the day, we're just competitors. In this case, it was yeah. like, with Mox, it was personal. Where Eddie was personal, they shaved Ortiz's head, so with Ortiz it was personal. You know, like it, there was so much, like, like, like it felt like a real legit blood feud. You know, no pun intended. And then on top of that, like, 
when you see them at the end, you know, and you remember all the shit that they had to put up with, and they're over here, fucking Ortiz is over here doing the fucking Rick Rude. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know, like to see them like finally victorious and after all the bullshit that the Jazz put them through, I think that was perfect. And I feel like last year's was good, but this one was just perfect. So I like I I said this last night on Kenny Show, and I said the same thing to TJ earlier before we went live. This match was a little bit more tamer than last year's, because last year's it was everybody was bloody the fuck up. This one was half of the team gets bloodied the fuck up. I feel like I feel like a good be- amount of people were bleeding here. I, mean, I feel like no, yeah, a Mox, good amount of Mox people- was leaking. You feel me? A good amount of people bled here. Yeah. And, you know, a, g- a good amount of people here walked away very differently, mm-hmm. you know, with welts, bruises, and all that other shit. They killed like, Sammy. Again. <laughs> you, uh, yeah. Sammy Guevara died. <laughs> but at this point, how many times How many times at this point are they going to kill Sammy? They killed him in Stadium <laughs> San Pete. They killed him in a fucking golf cart. <laughs> I, they killed him in this. He's killed himself in ladder matches. He's like, the one who's come, willing to do all this shit. Let him do it. <laughs> him, him and Dar- yo, if we if we ever see Darby Allen mm-hmm. in a blood and guts, oh my be god, prepared for the, no, be prepared for the worst. <laughs> if, they, if they, they the throw worst. me off a, off off of any type of cell ever in my entire life and career, <laughs> y'all better get an entire truck full of hay because that's the only way. I'm doing <laughs> the Rikishi style, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Because not for nothing. That man landed Kush. <laughs> you feel me? He yeah, just he landed on all that the, bluff. He had the yeah. safest drop. Ever. That wasn't even a choke slam. He that took was a like, practice I'm gonna, th- I'm gonna grab your throat and I'm just gonna shove just, you off. Uh, <laughs> right, yeah, take this that practice. Was, that was just, a, that was just a shove slam. <laughs> yep. But no, the, again, like this match, it felt a bit more tamer with the blood. It got a bit more extreme with all the weapons and all that other shit. We got a better ending than what we got last year. Was this better than last year's, in my opinion? Yes, it was. Did it tell a good story? Yes, it was. Was it personal? Yes, the fuck it was. Was it worth watching on free TV? Hell fuck Hell yeah. Give me, <laughs> give me more. Give me more, nigga. Give me fucking more. It's so it, crazy bro. that we basically get war games on free TV. It's yep. wild, yeah. Yep. They, yeah, like we all said, this is fun. Uh, the only down I had for this was, wasn't even anybody's fault. It was just, you know, losing Santana in a bad accident. But, you know, other than that, yeah. everything that needed to hit big, hit big. And, you know, I love that they centered the finish around Eddie and Claudio. Like, mm-hmm. imagine a major company building off a Chikara feud in 2022. That shit is so cool to me. That's fire. Uh, but... Did yeah, you see was... the pictures of, of Eddie and the PC? It's so weird. Yeah, yeah. Uh. <laughs> think. Yeah, it, 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 it really another timeline. Just seeing, that's just where seeing he ended him up. in a WWE shirt. What the hell? In another uh. timeline. That's where he ended up. At least it was black and gold and he likes those colors. So sorry. <laughs> Eddie Kingston in black and gold NXT would have been cool. Honestly. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. it would have been. It really would have been. But, um, yeah, man, that's dynamite. That's blood and guts. I mean... You know, the, the namesake of the show obviously delivered. But I thought even outside of that, they did a lot in building up up and coming talent and pushing forward storylines. Christian with Luchasaurus, Jade and Athena and Chris Statlander, Orange Cassidy, just two matches. And he feels like one of the biggest stars in the company yep. once again. Yep. This was a this was a really fun show, I thought. Yep. Really fun. Yep, it was. This was a really fun show indeed. And, you know, giving us a whole hour of blood and guts, worth it. Definitely worth it. Like, this was just, an, this was basically the Iron Man of the whole fucking show. This is what they were building up for, and I'm happy that they built up towards this. And they gave the whole entire second hour to this. I, Not bad. I, I like the, the show. I mean, uh, Luchasaurus to me is, is is fucking great. And now that he's Kane, <laughs> it's fucking awesome, bro. I'm down with it. I just feel like, yo, we're missing Tyson Tomko, bro. Find out what he's doing. Find out. Hopefully, he didn't do nothing crazy so he can't get back in the industry. And, you know, figure out what's going on with him and, you know, try to bring him on just for, at least for, for like, nostalgia's sake. You know what I'm saying? Are you serious? What? Already, they're doing this shit. What happened? They have officially dropped a money in the bank store 
inside the MGM Grand. Well, you know they know how to make. Yeah, money. I mean, yeah. It, to be honest, the, the show is in like what three days? Yeah, two so days. Yeah. I, 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 I bet you right now they got a bunch of volunteers that they're not gonna pay to work in this shit. Yeah, probably. And then, you know, I'm sure <laughs> they they had that planned anyway because you know they originally planned to do it in the stadium and shit. So yeah. they probably had that all set up anyway. So they you know just they're gonna, gonna do, do this for summer. They're gonna do this for SummerSlam also. Oh, for sure, for sure. That's a big four. Um, I mean, the, the Undertaker's doing his one dead man show in Tennessee. So yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. But yeah, this is Dynamite, and yep. you know, that's the show. I had fun. Yeah, that's that's the show. Well, Tej, with that being said, let them know where to find us. Yeah, you already know where to find us. Find us on Instagram at Ramble Mania Show and at Banter Club Podcast. Find us on Twitter at Ramble Mania, Facebook.com slash Ramble Mania Show. Also find our group there, Ramble Mania Show's Banter Club. We and the other wrestlers and podcasters and everybody we associate with post all the going on and all that's going down. As far as the audio goes, or everywhere audio is found at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Anchor, Tune, and Overcast. Everywhere your podcasts are found, search Ramble Mania Show or Banter Club. As far as the visuals, twitch.tv slash Ramble Mania Show. We're on Spotify video. We're on YouTube. Search up Ramble Mania Show or Banter Club. But when you get here, like the videos, click subscribe, and click the bell. So that when the new content drops, it goes, it goes straight, straight to, to year. year. To year. And as for me personally, find me on Instagram at TJ the Great One. That's TJ the GR, the number eight, the number one. And find me on Twitter at TJ the Great. That's TJ the GR, the number eight. It's as simple as that. TJ the Great TJ the Great You can find me on Instagram at the number 6 The letter X, the letter L, that is at 6XL You can find me on Twitter at S Double I, double X, 8I Great, that is at S-I-I-X-X You're already And you can find us on a little platform Called TikTok Where we post funny clips of all the crazy things We do here For all of Yeah and you find me on Instagram at iZombies, double I Z O M B double I E S Z. For TJ the Great, for the Angel Dutch 6 xl I am Hazel the I Zombie. This has been Banter Club Dynamite Edition. We would like to wish all of you hey, a point hey, of hey, 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 we, we have a name for, for the people. What is it? We would like to leave all our DC aliens, aka the Banter Club loyalists. With a little something BC we aliens. like to Yeah, damn right, BC Aliens ba- Banter Club Loyalists BCL BC Aliens Fuck you uh, know about Outcast, nigga <laughs> My God <laughs> if I Act like you know <laughs> With like a little something that we call a uh, Too sweet Too sweet A good fight Fight hey, is it Hazel A good fight A good bye And a good night Hit him with the machine gun